Hi there, this is Brahm, and I'm going to show off my new console-based image editor called Vimage. You can get it from GitHub. The page is github.com slash brahmbrez slash vimage, capital V. Installation instructions are towards the top. If you install morelock.sh for Windows, Mac, or Linux, then you can type morelock install brombrez slash vimage at the command prompt. And yes, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Further down in the readme is the list of key commands. So vimage is vim-inspired, more so in the command structure, the interface, the user interface, more than uh, anything to do with editing text. But it uses some similar, similar concepts and some similar commands. So there are single stroke key commands, which perform editing functions and, well, image manipulation functions. And there are command line commands where you type colon and then a command and something maybe a little more complex or a little less common happens. All right, so let's say you've got it installed. And as a quick side note, on uh, Windows and Linux, it runs in true color. And on Mac OS, if you use the built-in terminal, it only supports 256 color images. But uh, I'm using iTerm2 here on Mac OS. iTerm2 supports a full 24-bit color, true color as well. Okay, I've got a demo directory. I've installed Vimage. I've got several images and a movie. And let's type, if we just type Vimage by itself, no files will be loaded. It's just empty. You could create a new file or open from here, whatever. I'll quit out of that again. So instead I'll type Vimage and dot for the current folder. That will open all image files in the current folder. So Here's Escobar, one, two, three. I took them from the meme. And here's a, uh, a flame, sort of sprite sheet. Let me, uh, let me quit out of this. I can quit one by one with colon Q, colon Q, or I can type colon QQ to quit all of them, quit all files. Let me open this folder in Finder, and just let's look at some of these images in Finder. So there's Escobar 1, I should be using Quick Look, 2, 3, and there's the uh, Flame Sprite Sheet. Okay, go back here. So back to Vimage, Vimage, all these images. So we've got the image list on the left. Uh, J and K move the cursor up and down, select a different image. You can zoom in on an image with Z, capital Z zooms in. And there's multiple levels of zoom. In the bottom right, you can see the pixel scale or the zoom level. So when, you're, when I'm zoomed out, it's one screen pixel is 7.7 .7 image pixels. And when I'm zoomed all the way in, it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. When I'm zoomed in or at any zoom level, intermediate zoom level, I can use uh, HJKL to scroll around. That's the same keys as uh, moving the cursor in Vim. I can type capital Z to zoom out again. So Z zooms in, capital Z zooms out. I can zoom in and hit escape to get out of zoom mode and back to the image list mode. Okay, 
So Vimage is not really designed for drawing pictures, but it's more designed for manipulating photos and images. So, and by manipulation, it's not like applying filters and things like that, but it's like flipping, re resizing, cropping, those sorts of operations. So let me hit uh, zero as another key. I can hit zero to reset the zoom and fit the entire picture on screen. So R rotates the image. Zoom out again. R, 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 capital R rotates the other direction. F flips back and forth. Capital F flips vertically. And what else we got? We got uh, N. N is for join. So if I'm on this image and I want to join it with the one below it, which is this one, I can go to the top one and tap N, and that joins those two horizontally. Or I can type U for undo, and I can type capital N to join vertically. Zoom in, check it out, zoom out. I'll undo again. So how about let's go back to horizontal in, horizontal join. And I'll, uh, I'll have this be the top picture. I'm making a little collage here. So capital N to join those vertically. And now I've got a uh, Pablo Escobar meme assembled, waiting around. Now I can Y to copy and P to paste makes a copy of that image. I could P, 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 paste, paste, paste. I could 5P to paste five more copies. I can type D to delete a copy and save it to the clipboard, copy it to the clipboard. D, D, or how about uh, 6D? Oh, too many, undo, 5D, there we go. So, uh, let's see what next. Deleting images and, oh yes, yeah, copying to the clipboard. So this uh, copy and paste, Y to copy, P to paste, it's using the internal clipboard, internal to the app. There's a way to switch it to use the operating system clipboard. So if we type uh, double quote or shift quote, that toggles the clipboard to the Mac OS clipboard the, or, or whatever system you're using. So, so quote, double quote toggles between OS and internal clipboard. So if I'm using the OS clipboard and I type Y to copy, then I can open up a paint program, make a new image, paste, and there we go. So even though it's showing up in low resolution and possibly 256 color, if you're using a different terminal instead of this true color, it uh, all looks, it, it keeps the, um, uh, what you call it, fidelity behind the scenes. Okay, uh, let me just illustrate a few more features by let me undo this back into several, three separate pictures. Just undo all that. There's a 50 limit of uh, 50 undo levels built in. So let's say I want to add a little padding to these images. Well, let me look at some more things I can do with these images. So right now it's uh, 720 by 351. By the way, this is also a great way to just find out how big something is, how big an image is, is just paste it into here. So let me resize to um, half the size. I can do that in a couple ways. I could do colon resize and then what's half of 720, that's what, 360? 
So I could do 360, and then I can just hit X. If I leave off the second dimension, then it's, it's going to just keep the same aspect ratio and figure out what the second dimension is. So, or I could type in 360 by you know, 200 is gonna mess up the aspect ratio. So undo that. So let me resize. I can type a few letters to make it a unique command and then hit space. And then, yeah, 360x. So that resized it to half size. Let me undo that with you. I could also type resize 0.5. So if you use a number with a decimal point, a real number, then it interprets that as a fraction instead of a pixel size. So 0.5x uh, 2.0. So half the size, half the width, twice the height. Or just resize 0.5x. Maintains the aspect ratio. It changed. It's just don't really see anything. It's because it's the same. Yeah, same aspect ratio. Okay, uh, what, what else can we do? I can t create a, well, I can crop. There's several ways to crop. I can do uh, colon crop. I could do, let's see, I could do 100 pixels on all sides. Or let me undo that. I could do crop and I could type how many from the left, how many from the top, the right, the bottom. You know, that's not super convenient, but once in a while it's handy. So I could do, I could do uh, 100 off the left, zero off the top, 100 off the right, zero off the bottom. If the order seems a little weird at first, just remember it's like x1, y1, x2, y2 is where the order comes from. Okay, so just cropped the sides a bit. Or I could type, I could crop to a new size explicit size, so I can do crop. And so instead of a hundred off this side and a hundred off that side, I could say 720 minus 200 is what, 520 by. And in this case, if I don't list the second dimension and it'll just keep the second dimension the same, so. Okay, so that's basically losing 200 pixels off the sides. Now it took them equally from each side. I could change that with the anchor command. So undo and anchor left and then crop 520 by whatever. So that removed the pixels entirely from the right side because it has the left side kind of pinned in place and so on and so on. All right. And there's another final way to crop, which is type C to go into crop mode. And now if I press J for down, it, it's gonna crop a pixel off the bottom. So J, J crops the bottom by one, J, 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 J. How about if I type 10 J? And then I can hit dot to repeat, dot, 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 cropping 10 each time. Okay, let me undo those. And you can also do shift whatever, shift HJKL to expand. So let me expand by 10. So 10 capital J expands instead of crops. So it adds, it's adding 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels to the image or to the canvas. Now it's adding them as black to get it to be a different color. It's a command line command, colon, BG. And then I could type white. And now let me, let me uh, go into crop mode again and do 10 capital J. Now there's some white coming in. I can do BG, I can do a single, like if I type uh, C, then that's gonna be fully opaque FF, but then it's gonna be CC, CC, CC for red, green, blue. I could type BG, I could type a red, green, blue as a uh, 
I can type three hex, hex values. So RGB five, six, seven, that's gonna be five, five, six, six, seven, seven, or BG, I could list out a full six digits, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or I can list out four digits, and those will be ARGB instead of just RGB. So let's have it halfway transparent, FFF. That's 88FFFFFF. And finally, I can type all eight hex letters to be very specific background color, uh, 7F. F E A two B one whatever. Actually, and I said finally, but that's not the final thing to illustrate there. Crop mode ten capital J. It's expanding some translucent edges there. So there are all the major color values. E G cyan that works. And there's a final one. I can change the background to be random color. And that's gonna be different every time it's needed. So I'll go into crop mode. I'll crop 20 capital J. It's that color. And again, hit period to repeat. Now it's that color, just random color each time. Okay, let me do all that. Undo all that. And now I want to add or join these photos together with, let's say, eight pixels of white margin in between. So a couple ways I could do it. So I want this one joined with that one, but eight pixels of white in between. <clears throat> so one way to do it would be to, well, I didn't even show you the new image yet. So colon new, if you just hit return, it creates a new image of the same size as the currently selected image, which is often handy. Uh, it's still set on random color, so if I hit period to repeat that new command, I'm gonna get a new color every time. Okay, let me D, 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 D. So I could create a, I'll set the background to white, and I'll make a new image, and I'll say, that it's eight pixels wide by X, so eight X, 351 pixels high. Now I wanna join it, now it's on the wrong side of that. So what I can do is I can hold down shift and in this image list mode, hold down shift and J or K, it grabs onto that image and moves it up and down within the list. So I want it under this one so that when I hit in, it's joined onto the side. And I'll hit in again. It joins that one on with the next one. Zoom in to see what's happening, okay. So one way to add that white border would be to, to uh, create a new image and stick it on the side. Another way would be to use the crop command. So let me set the yeah, let me just use the interactive crop. That's pretty handy, actually. So C for crop mode. Now if I hit 8K, K is for up, and so that would delete, that would crop eight lines. I don't want that, 8K. Okay, undo. I want to add eight lines, so 8 capital K. There we go. And finally, okay, escape out of crop mode. Go up here and capital N joins that vertically. I'll hit Y, copy to clipboard, and I'll go check it out in my paint program. Here we go, looking pretty good. This was, so incidentally, this program, Vimage, it's kind of the unification of two separate little tools I worked on and sort of maintained over the years. 
kind of last few years. One was called image size, and it was purely command line based running, pro running uh, manipulations on images. Image size started out as a way to just figure out how big images were, which it's always like a little bit of a surprising pain in the ass when you just need to know how what the dimensions are. And it evolved from there into rotate and and join together and split apart and all this. And so and th so I, I did that and then separately I made a program called Shell View, which just just uh, basically printed out or, or displayed images using the same style, but you couldn't manip manipulate or edit them at all. So yeah, so this is the unification of that. And uh, yeah, the point on that, so a little trivia history, but, and then the point was one of the first things I added to image size, apart from telling me the image size, was the ability to join images together to help me make memes. Um, yeah, good. Okay, so kind of done with that for a little while. Uh, well, let me, let me just show you a couple of random things on it. So one thing that Vimage supports is bitwise operations on the, that apply at the pixel level. So one thing I could do, oops, okay, one thing I could do would be to uh, rotate the RGB bits right or left with greater than or less than. So let me, let me rotate the bits right by one by typing, typing greater than. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That had the effect of shifting the red, green, blue components into different bytes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I can save a little time. I can just type eight greater than period to repeat, cycling through. I could mask, let's see, let me Y to copy and 2P to paste. I could command line and, or ampersand, and type out a color value, ARGB color value. So let's say I wanna keep the alpha channel and the red channel and clear out the green and blue. So I can mask it with uh, F, F, zero, zero. So that'll be doubled in, those hex digits will be doubled or repeated into uh, F, 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 zero, 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 zero. So that's preserving the red. Could come down here and do the same thing for green, F, zero, and I'll see ampersand, F, zero, F, zero and blue, ampersand, F, O, O, F. You can also do bitwise operations between two images. So the command line version only applies to one image, the current image. But if you, uh, if you just tap the key as a key command, so how about I end this red image with this green image under here, so and it's gonna to be totally black because they're canceling each other out. Undo that. I could or, and I could or again, and I'm combining the bits from the red, green, blue, separate channels, all back into one. So that's pretty handy and we'll, we'll do some more with that later. I can also do things like, there's a command to swap and pick two components, like often there's problems uh, with like red and blue getting swapped in something. So let me swap R and B. That exchanges those two colors. I'll hit period to repeat that. Okay, swap them back. I could copy red to blue, so they're the same. Or I could copy, so undo. I can copy a specific value like FF to the blue channel. 
undo. And yeah, that's probably good for good for that. That's that'll set up a little bit more later. All right, I'll uh, D to delete that from our list. Deleting from the list doesn't delete from disk. I can still I can type colon open and uh, just star for everything or or period for the current folder, and it'll open in any file that's not already open. It'll reopen it. There is a command that removes things from disk permanently. So let's say I assembled my meme here in and capital N. Now I save it. Oh, by the way, so it's colon save and uh, colon W are synonymous. Colon W is faster, but um, colon save is kind of my go-to in Vim for saving a file with a different name. Because then it, if you do colon W, different name, it doesn't change the name of the currently open file. It just saves this copy. But if you type colon save in Vim, then it does update the name in the currently edited copy. Anyways, so... They do the same thing in Vimage. <clears throat> so I'll save uh, Escobar. If I don't put .jpg, then it's going to save it as a ping. OK, so there is a command to delete a file from disk, rm, colon rm. And so that's not only closing the file here, it's also deleting it from the hard drive or from the file system. All right, what next? We've got, let's see, well, let me, let me show you the split command. One thing I've been using Vimage for recently is I've been getting into messing with <coughs> mid-journey AI image rendering. And so Midjourney makes an image and it does this like two by two images. So let me go here and, and a lot of times I'll just want to pull one of them out and maybe send it or copy it or save it. So let me copy that image and let me go back to Vimage. Let me hit double quote to double check where I'm at internal OS clipboard. Okay, and now P to paste. So there's this mid-journey set of images. So one handy command is colon split. And what, basically how many tiles wide and high is it now? And it'll split each one off. So I'll say it's currently two by two, two x two tiles. <clears throat> And now it splits each one into its its own separate image. And so it makes it easy for me to say, okay, I'll save, I'll take these two, join them together, Y to copy it to clipboard, and paste it into, I don't know, paste it anywhere, paint program, or send it to somebody over messages or whatever. Okay, back to Vimage. Okay, so Flame. I found this sprite sheet online and I want to add, I want to give it a transparent background. It's got a just a black background. So let me show you two ways to do this. The first way is going to have a few little issues with it. Like it's like it's a reasonable approach, but it doesn't quite work as well as we would hope, but it shows off some different concepts. So what I'm going to do first is basically I want to copy I want to use the sort of intensity of the pixel as the alpha value. And so black would be become alpha 0 fully transparent. White would become fully opaque, anything in between. 
would be in between. So here's a roundabout way of doing that. And, and again, I'll, I'll show you like a better and quicker way in a minute, but just for practice. So let me uh, zero to zoom out. Let me just make, so Y to copy, 3P, three copies. And let me shift, let me shift the RGB, let me rotate the RGB bits. Uh, I'll leave it as is on one and then eight greater than to rotate. I'll go down and then I'll hit dot dot. So now if we or these three together, so or, or, then I've sort of ORed every red component with every green component with every blue comp component on a per pixel basis. So for each pixel, it's red, green, and blue have been ORed together. And then I'll copy, so they're all the same, red, green, and blue now. So I'll just copy red to the alpha channel. And then I wanna clear the color channels so that I basically just have an alpha mask I can or. So a couple ways I could do that, I could end it with F000, that would work, or undo. I could copy the value 00 into RGB channels. That would also do the same thing. Let me go down to this flame, the original here, and let me let me clear out the alpha channel, preserving the color channels. So I'll end it with zero for alpha. FFF preserves the colors. Can't see anything currently, but let me or these two bitwise or with the vertical bar, and there we go. Looks pretty good. There is a little problem though. The edges, the edges of the flames are dark. And so that's gonna look kind of artificial in this case. I mean, in, in the case of like having something that's supposed to be fire, having actual like dark tinted edges is not quite ideal. So, and, and so kind of the reason it happens is we don't really know the process we're using with the process we're using. There's no way to really tell if a pixel is supposed to be dark. Let's see how to... There's, there's essentially, a, it's, it's ambiguous and there's kind of no way to resolve if a pixel is dark because it was bright, but it's also translucent and it's on black, or if a pixel was just a dark color that's totally opaque. So yeah, there's, you know, what's the difference between an opaque dark color or a translucent light color that's, that's uh, got black showing through beneath it. So anyways, so here's a different approach we could use. Let me undo, let me back up some of this. Okay, just get back to um, the first image. So there is a uh, command called RGB to HSB to hue saturation brightness, also called hue saturation value. And that reinterprets the pixels. So it's gonna leave alpha the same, which is all opaque right now. So it leaves alpha the same. And so now the, uh, the red pixel is so it's sh still showing in an interpretation of red, green, blue pixels or what it thinks is red, green, blue. But now the red values represent the hue of the color, which like zero to 255 as you increase in there, it's like cycling through all the different possible colors. Uh, the green channel is showing the saturation or how far between like the color and like a gray, you know, a white or black, how, uh, how far along that axis a color is. 
And then the blue is showing the brightness. And so, yeah, we can see basically the, the flames are definitely like blue in there. And then there's like less blue on the edges where, uh, where it's not as bright. So what I'll do from here is I'm going to just copy, I'm going to go ahead and grab that brightness channel. So I'm going to copy blue to alpha. And wow, that's like a lot easier than before. So, and, um, and now since it's a flame, I just want to, and let's see, you know, we couldn't necessarily do this for everything. It wouldn't be as quick and easy for things that aren't like light sources. But since these, since this is a light source, I can basically just say, I'm going to, I'm going to force, I'm going to say that every, every pixel in here is full brightness. So let me, uh, let me just copy the color FF into the B channel, the brightness channel. So now those green edges disappear and it's all, it's all definitely blue. And now let me convert back from HSB to RGB. And now it's perfect. Look at that, there are no dark edges. There's only edges where it's translucent and showing through. Okay, and similar to what I did with the mid-journey photos, I could uh, just split this. Usually like my games and stuff, I, I want them all arranged in a grid anyways for my uh, source art. My art assets but anyways if, if you wanted to let's see what are they it's uh eight wide by six high so i could do colon split eight so these are eight by six and here i've got all the fire frames if i had these well, you know, let's say I want to save these. Um, so I could go to each one and type colon W to save it. The next one, save it. There's a couple ways we could handle it. So in general, if you want to repeat something a bunch of times, I, you can make a macro. So to make a macro, type Q to start recording your actions and then do whatever you want to do. So I'll, I'll type uh, colon W to save j to go down a line and then q again to stop recording the macro now i've got a macro i can a to apply a to apply a to apply and you can also type capital a i'll go down a bit here and then capital a applies to all current and below so it just keeps replaying that macro so i saved all those files there's still some unsaved ones here now in this particular situation, I can also do colon wall, write all, and that writes all files. All right, so now let's say I've got all these files to start with. I wanna join them together. And uh, it was eight by six. I'll just do six by eight to be a little different. Colon join six x eight. And so you want to be on the top one of what's going to be 48 tiles and joins them all together. All right, looking good. Let me, I'll just delete that. I'll open everything in this folder. Uh, now I want to get rid of all these flames again. Well, here's a good uh, application of the macro. So remember, colon rm removes the current file from the file system. Colon rm. Okay, so let me make a macro to make repeating that a little easier. So I'll do 
key to record, colon rm, q to stop again. <laughs> Actually, I don't need to do it. I can just type, uh, yeah, forget that. I can just type rm, colon rm, and then period to repeat, dir. Okay, uh, let me, so then 10 period, well, delete 10 more, P just period by itself, we'll delete 10 more again, and 10 more, and better just do the last ones individually. I do one period, to, ooh, that, uh, two period. Okay. Okay, last thing. I don't know why that showing is modified. I don't remember modifying it. May have accidentally. QQ exclamation point quits without saving. Quits all files without saving. Okay, uh, last thing is, so, so the fire is basically something I was, I did for the game I'm working on for Axor the Mighty. And I'll show you again, like something I literally um, did, basically a process I, I literally did for the game I was working on. So I've got, I bought this uh, Magma video online and so my uh, lava splash animations are like literal video footage made into a sprite sheet. So let me convert, and it came with like a, a transparent background built into the video. But anyways, I'm going to use ffmpeg, which is installed separately. And input magma one movie, and I'll just give it an output file pattern of uh, magma dash percent zero three d dot ping and ffmpeg kind of figures out that you want to save uh, each frame as a ping file all right got a bunch of frames and so let me vimage I'm just going to limit it to magma star ping. Okay, here's my magma. It does some like background loading. Like once once you go idle for a, for like half a second, then it finishes loading. Uh, oh, also by the way, some list jump commands. Lowercase g goes to the top capital G goes to the bottom. You can type a uh, specific index of like uh, 100 goes to item number 100 and so on. Similar to them. All right, so what I want to do first is 1920 by 1080. My ground tiles in my game are 200 pixels wide as the original <clears throat> like is the the maximum maximum size so let me just resize all of these to be to be 200 pixels wide maintaining the same aspect ratio so i will do a uh, macro q and then colon resize 200 x so 200 by whatever 200 by 112, and then I'll go, yeah, that's fine. And then uh, Q to turn off the macro. Now I'll hit A, I'll, I'll just try it out a couple times. A for a, again, 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 or apply. <laughs> I think I said it stands for apply, not again. Apply, apply, apply. And then, okay, it seems to be working. And now I'll go apply all, so capital A. Resizing each image. Uh, 
Now I'll, um, I'll just save them all at this point, call in the wall. Okay, now, now the, the main trick I want to show you, so besides like resizing all of that, which was, which was one big step, I noticed <clears throat> that the lava splashes don't actually extend up all the way to the top. So I could like get rid of some extra pixels here. So, but it's, but it's hard to tell exactly because a lot of the, the pixels are very faint and a lot of times when you have these faint, mostly translucent pixels, it gets really hard to tell where the exact edges are. So I've got two, two things that'll help the situation. So first off, let me uh, jump back up to the top. There's the T command, key command, stands for stack. And so T stacks the current image on top of the next image. And so it's, it's getting those all stacked together. Um, or, oops, Whew, okay. Went, I, I undid a little too far. All right, but we're back on track. So how many have I got? So it's one, two, three, ninety. So I've got three ninety. So I'm going to do three ninety T to stack them together. And yeah, that's all of my lava frames overlaid. And now, how far up does it actually extend? Well, here's a here's another trick. Colon that's built in. Colon HA toggles hard alpha. <clears throat> Hard alpha says that any any pixel that's even slightly transparent or translucent should be drawn as opaque. And so it doesn't actually change them in the image, it just changes them on the display. So it's easy to tell exactly what areas have a, uh, a pixel in them, a non-transparent background pixel not a pixel that's not transparent background. Okay, so and then the final final step is to figure out okay, how many how many pixels is that? So let me go into crop mode with C and just take one off the top. See what happens. K okay. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 escape. Okay, so 16 pixels or the overall size now is 200 by 96. So that's that's what'll work. I can cut out some of that dead space. All right, so I'm going to remember that 200 by 96. I could uh, let me redo that. And I can just Y to copy this image to the clipboard. And I'm trying to think of this will um stay in the clipboard in between everything. I haven't actually double checked that. Anyways. Okay. I undid my stacking. So now it's individual frames. Can I paste? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I want to just resize or crop everything to be 200 by 112. So I'm going to set the anchor to the bottom and record a little macro. Q colon resize x 112. So that keeps the width and no, x 96. Resizes the height to be 96. Not resize, crop. Crop x 96. Okay, and Q to stop the macro. And yeah, that looks good. Okay. So that was apply the macro, little a, now capital A, apply it all. Did 
delete that. Okay, everything is looking good. And so what have I got? I've got 390. And let me just join those into, let, let me make a sprite sheet out of them. I, I'll make 20, 20 wide by 20 high. So that would be 400. There's not 400, but check out what happens if I go to the top one and join 20x20. And it's going to create just uh, empty, empty images for those last tiles to round it out to 20 by 20. And I could undo and set my background to transparent, or another way to say transparent is zero alpha, zero RGB. And let me again do the join 20x20. So, same thing, but with some transparency at the end. All right, I could save that as a magma you know, sprite sheet or image sheet, magma sheet. Ping. Let me take a brief look, see if there's anything I forgot to mention that I really want to mention. It's a handy command. If you do colon aspect 16 colon 9, it just crops as necessary to make your image a 16 by 9 aspect ratio or whatever aspect ratio. So yeah, a lot of times I'll upload something on a website where it recommends a certain aspect ratio and so that's an easy way to get it. Oh yeah. Um, clamp. Yeah, clamp, you can basically go through and say, I want my, I want to force each red comp color component to be between this low value and this high value. You, you list like uh, RGB or ARGB, you list all the components for, for the low and then all of them for the high, but it, it uh, compares red to red, min max, blue to blue, min max, Etc. So that's occasionally handy. Copy crop. You can aspect fill or aspect fit. Oh, gradients. Um, yeah, something else I I'll show you that real quick. Let me just make a new. 600 by 600. So gradient, there's two variations. So you can do gradient like black to white. In other words, two colors. And so that's left to right. If you wanted it vertically, you could just rotate the result. Or there's a four color variation, gradient. So like white, red, green, blue. So that's the top left corner, top right corner, bottom left corner, bottom right corner, like so. And I added that specifically because I'm often needing to create a uh, sort of a perfect, totally rectangular gradient for a game. And it's often hard to do that kind of hard to do that with a tool with a paint program. Okay. Yeah, some different bitwise operations, exclusive or we didn't talk about, that's fine. 
and yeah that's it i think we covered all the essentials all right well that's an introduction to vimage check it out let me know what you think all right catch you later